I just turned myself into a Ghibli movie character with the help of AI. And you might ask yourself, will I be able to do the same? I will show you how you can achieve the same result with a few simple AI tools that are easy to use. I have to mention that this workflow is heavily inspired by an artist called Framer who shared his workflow on Twitter a few days ago. I will link him right below down in this video. So definitely check him out. He also has an amazing course uh, for AI animation and how to bring your mid-journey images to life. That being said, let's dive right into the video. So to have a base, I started of course in Midjourney. <laughs> for what are we using Midjourney in this case? It was for once for the background image and for the animated elements in the background. So I wanted to see myself actually standing there on the bus station like we saw in the Framer video. What I did was actually try to recreate that shot. Of course a little bit different because I didn't want to copy everything but I really like the main concept so I wanted to go ahead with that. The first prompt I actually used and wrote was a bus stop sign, a mega sized Toronto Ghibli style, daytime, no rain and minus minus AR 16 to 9. So you can actually see I wanted to go ahead and have a really nice atmosphere with having daytime and no rain. So this is what I did and first prompted. I then saw that it didn't work directly out of the box. I tried around a lot with different variation and the remix mode. By the way, don't get discouraged here in the process. Be sure that you try around a lot with the variations that help for sure. And also you can define the remix mode even further when you have activated in the mid journey settings and try around there with uh, more variations and stuff to define it further. I then also tried to run with night images as you can see so that it's nighttime in the prompt but in the end I didn't like it as much as the day version so I went ahead with the day version. Once then I was happy with it I then saved it onto my PC. Afterwards I went then ahead with the car prompt because I not only wanted to see myself standing there with the Toronto I wanted also, like we saw in the video again on Framer, I wanted to have a car or bus moving there. So first I started to try around and prompted a car, but in the end I really liked the bus idea more, so I went ahead with this one. I had the main challenge that Midjourney was not displaying it from the side view. But since we have in our background images, we see everything from the side, it needed to match. And of course we needed to see our bus or car then also from the side. So I basically went ahead and gave the side view a bigger weighting in the prompt itself. So that Midjourney knows, okay, for me it's really important that the side view is really the main focus here. So my final prompt then looked something like this, a bus with people in it. It's a side view of course, and then double, double, colon two, Ghibli style, minus, minus, AR6 into nine. Once you are then happy with your car or bus and the background image, you can save both to your PC because in the next step, we really need to use them. Because the next tool you can use to really achieve this Ghibli look is using Styler AI. If you haven't heard of it, no problem. It's just a, another AI tool which you can use. You get free credits, first of all, when you create an account. Only thing you need to do then is log in, upload the image then and select the image to image option. You can then search for narrative film in the style section. Because here this narrative film is matching really closely to the Gibsley style and give it this a uh, really unique look. Hit then start and wait until the images are processed. Once you are then happy with the image, hit the download button and then save the image again to your PC. As a next step, we want then to cut out elements that we will need in the end. So what really helped me here was to go into Photoshop and then use the select subject feature in Photoshop. This makes it much easier to cut out parts and create selections for the objects. And you don't need to cut out everything on your own anymore. And now guys comes the fun part. Filming yourself with the ca with the camera. So first of all, make sure that you wear clothes that is separated from your background. Don't worry too much about your camera. It can be either shot, of course, with 
a camera if you have one, like a DSLR for example, but you can also easily shoot it on your iPhone or another smartphone if you have one. In this case, I shot in 4K to lose as little detail as possible on 30 FPS. As a next step, match then the camera angle that we have from the background image. For better stability and also to make sure that the camera is not moving because we, of course, we have a static background, make sure to use a tripod or at least a stable object where you can place your iPhone or camera on so that nothing is moving in the end because otherwise it won't work. So luckily in my case, since I wanted to film myself with an umbrella and have a rainy scene, it actually rained that day, which made it of course more realistic, or at least I had the feeling that it was fitting to the scene. So luckily I was not unhappy that it rained that day because otherwise I hate rain. <laughs> Once then you shot your footage, make of course sure that you have everything filmed properly and that it's really there before you're returning back home. Uh, make sure that you cut it then in the editing program of your choice. So it can be either Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or whatever is your preferred option here. Once we are then sitting again back behind our beautiful desktop, PC or whatever, you can then uh, just go ahead and we're using Runway now for the next step. Because what we want to do is of course extract ourselves from the background that we filmed on. So how you can do that? Luckily there is a really nice tool from Runway which is called the Background Remover Tool. So actually we need to log in into Runway and then choose the Background Remover from their website. Upload then the video that you shot. You can just select it through their website and then click on the area that you would like to mask. In this case, I of course selected myself. Most of the times, at least in my experience, you needed like two to three clicks until the AI recognizing yourself and extracting yourself from the background. The great thing is you can not just add points to yourself, you can also remove unwanted parts that the AI is recognizing wrongly. So you can just change the mode on the right and then either add additional points so that stuff is removed again or you can also even select a brush and then paint out what you don't want to have and the AI will automatically calculate the left frames so that it actually knows where it should not key you out. Once you're then happy, you can actually select done masking and make your final touches on the settings. Make here then sure that you select in the end the export button on the right. Once it's done, then you can download it and save it to your PC again. So now you have yourself extracted from the background. What is now the next step? So the next step is of course that we're turning ourselves into an anime version kind of, or like into this Ghibli style version so that we can integrate ourselves because otherwise, of course, it wouldn't look like it. What are you using for this? For this one, we're using Domo AI. So only thing you need to do here, it's very similar to the other AI websites is you enter the website and then click on try on website. We will then select the video option because of course we want to process a video here. Upload then the video that you got from Runway this time. On the left, we can then type in a prompt. So you can write something very simple here. Don't worry too much that it needs to be complex as a mid journey or something it can be really basic you then just need to choose a style for this one i used the anime version 5.2 which was also recommended by framer and which gave a really nice result so i would go ahead with this choose then of course the length of your video in this case from uh, for our case we're using the 10 seconds and basically only thing left to do is then choosing the right aspect ratio and then you can click generate. Afterwards, once it's then done, you can find it again in, in your library and then can download it to your desktop. First thing is then that I brought our video from Domo AI into After Effects. I use then the key light effect. If you haven't heard of it already, it's like a green screen keyer that will remove the green screen in the background from your character. Play around with the settings here until you have a result that you're happy with. Then I went ahead and imported our background image, either from Midjourney or Styler AI. And once you have done that, then you can match the character to a position that matches with the background so it makes sense and also scale him accordingly 
because of course our character should not be bigger than the tutorial for example. Then I went ahead and created a little eye animation because of course our tutorial should not just be static and do nothing. It should look a little bit more alive in the shot. So I just went ahead and went into Photoshop, imported then the background image and just painted him some eyelids so uh, that it actually looks like he's closing and opening the eyes again. Once I then had painted the eyes, I just exported again a PNG image and then took it into After Effects and then duplicated it there multiple times and then offset it in time so that it looks like he's opening and closing the eyes or again and again. Next, I went then ahead with the bus animation. So what I did was then to importing the bus that we cut out in Photoshop, place it in front of the character and the background images, and then just animate it from set keyframes basically and the position and then just animate it from right to left. Make sure here that you hit the pace right so that it's not too fast or too slow and that it feels natural in the end. I then also went ahead and added some motion blur to the bus so that it looked nicer because motion blur makes everything nicer basically. So man, just make sure if you're using in this case After Effects to turn on the motion blur enable function in the layer itself and search for an effect called CC for motion blur and choose this one and just drag it onto the layer and it will apply automatically the motion blur onto the layer itself. Then which really helped the image was because it, it was raining in my background images and of course I had myself standing there with an umbrella so it wouldn't make sense if we hadn't have moving rain. So how did I do this? Actually, I went ahead and searched on YouTube for uh, Ryan green screen. I then downloaded the video and then used again, like we did with our character, the key light effect, which did a really nice job on the rain itself and keyed it out really nice because then we could just put the rain layer on top of the other layers that we created already and then it just worked out of the box. I just then duplicated the rain footage a few times and then offset it again in the timeline so that it doesn't necessarily stop at a certain point and just looped kind of through the whole sequence. And then the last and final thing I did was rendering out the whole sequence through After Effects. Just make sure that you have all the settings there and then just export it. And then what I just did was taking it to Premiere Pro in the end, adding some nice sound effects, and that was the whole video. So actually, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just let me know down below. So in case you haven't yet, please uh, of course subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. And uh, now I will show you actually the final video output. See you on the next one and looking forward to actually see you then in the next video.